Hey, hello. I hope you are well today. Max Stirner. Real name, Jochen Kasper Schmidt. 1806-1856. Uh, he was one of the Berlin Young Hegelians. In 1844, he wrote a book, The Ego and Its Own. In some translations, it is said, The Ego and His Own. Uh, he didn't get a post in the state educational system, but taught for a while in a, a boarding school for girls. He made a rich marriage, later embarked on commercial speculation and went through bankruptcy and imprisonment for debt. It seems like a malicious irony of fate that the apostle of the absolute sovereignty of the ego died of a gnat bite, <laughs> G-N-A-T, gnat bite. Um, <clears throat> his book was a proclamation of the absolute uh, egocentrism. And uh, it can be said that Stirner's philosophy has been a precursor to at least some of the branches of um, anarchism and it has influenced existentialism in a great way, not least through Nietzsche, uh, who apparently had read Stirner's book, although he never specifically referred to it. Uh, <clears throat> for Stirner, he made a distinction between the ego and uh, individuality, because for him the ego was not a body or soul, for him that was pure uh, self-consciousness. And uh, he called it the unique one. Uh, he said that uh, even lang through language you cannot express um, the ego. <clears throat> For him, uh, the attempt of philosophy has always been to subject the ego to an impersonal being. Of, in the case of Christianity, to the uh, values imposed by God. In the case of liberalism, to the overall the human nature and uh, he says that it treats um, the human being only as a specimen in uh, the species Homo sapiens. Uh, he criticized uh, Feuerbach for that because Feuerbach uh, rid uh, humans of God's despotism but um, he subjected the ego to the species man, to the idea of a species man. And uh, for Stirner, the ego was absolutely unlimited. It shouldn't be uh, subjected, it shouldn't obey any other norms or law or values, uh, it should follow only its own subjective values. Stirner considered that the ego was enslaved by um, societal norms, by uh, the law, and uh, by the characteristics of civilization. He said that the education shouldn't teach people how to be servants to society, but uh, the education should teach people uh, how to express themselves, how to uh, realize their own inner uh, subjective values. For Stirner, the ego was a world in its own, and it was above everything else. He makes a distinction between the uh, personal values and the general good. Uh, he said, as far as I'm concerned, the general good is nothing. 
other people or uh, their value is nothing to me. My ego is the absolute sovereign because it is my own. It, and I shouldn't subject it to any other uh, impersonal being. For him, uh, law was the same thing. Um, <clears throat> he's, in his opinion, the criminal, if he isn't caught, is in his own right. He has uh, done what he himself wanted to do. Um, <clears throat> well, if he is caught, he doesn't, uh, he shouldn't blame anybody else. In that view, Raskolnikov, in Dostoevsky's book, Crime and Punishment, is a perfect representative of uh, that philosophy. Stirner, as Marx did, uh, protested against the philosophy of Hegel, where for Hegel, pure self-consciousness, the ideal um, self-consciousness is the being, and it uses uh, individuals in the role of uh, in the role of tools for its own journey towards the absolute, the absolute self-knowledge. Marx denied the existence of an ideal uh, self-consciousness. For him, human consciousness was a product of civilization. Um, while Stirner viewed civilization as through history all the time imposing other external, impersonal uh, things on the ego. So he denied civilization. So, is any community life possible on this basis? Stirner says yes, um, if people form personal relationships with other people. These relationships should not be mediated by the state or institutions. And when everybody uh, acts in such a way as to achieve his or her uh, desires, wishes, uh, norms and values, then people will make associations or disassociate as it is beneficial to themselves only. Because for him, the universe itself should be taken into account only as, as, as much as it serves uh, one's uh, subjective values. Um, Helms, I will put a link down there, has established that apart from anarchism, uh, which was influenced by Stirner's philosophy, there were different German groups which were the immediate precursors of, uh, the, of fascism uh, who had Stirner as their ideologist. Because it can be said, yes, that totalitarian fascism is completely different than the <clears throat> proclamation of egoism by Stirner, but in Stirner's philosophy, uh, the way the ego cares for itself does not preclude sometimes obeying um, other people or movements in so far as it serves uh, the final fulfillment of the ego's desires. I will read to you from Leszek Kolakowski what he says about uh, what there is in common between Stirner's philosophy and uh, fascism, fascist ideology. He says, as recent studies by Helms have shown, Stirner's doctrine inspired not only anarchists, but various German groups who were the immediate precursors of fascism. At first sight, Nazi totalitarianism may seem the opposite of Stirner's in radical individualism, but fascism was above all an attempt to dissolve 
the social ties created by history and replace them by artificial bonds among individuals who were expected to render implicit obedience to the state on grounds of absolute egoism. Fascist education combined the tenets of asocial egoism and unquestioning conformism, the latter being the means by which the individual secured his own niche in the system. Stirner's philosophy has nothing to say against conformism. It only objects to the ego being subordinated to any higher principle. The egoist is free to adjust to the world if it appears that he will better himself by doing so. So Marx criticizes um, Stirner because he says that what Stirner posits, the existence of a pure self-consciousness, which is only a kaleidoscope of uh, subjective experiences and subjective thoughts, values, norms, which uh, have no connection with other people and their own uh, personal uh, subjective desires, values, uh, inner uh, convictions, and so on, uh, because Marx uh, thinks that there is no such thing. For Marx, human consciousness is the product of uh, civilization, the product of human history, social history. Why Marx thinks that uh, Stirner's revolt is impotent? Because that would mean that um, only with ideas people separately uh, make a revolt against the things that oppress them, the things that subject them. And those things are the material um, things in the world, the material relationships, uh, <clears throat> the ties that man has created through history, like state, institutions, and so on. And uh, according to Marx, it is impossible only through um, mental states to, to revolt against uh, material ties. Because ma the, the material ties, this is the thing that determines a mental state, a human consciousness. And Marx says it is an illusion to imagine that an individual can live in a community without the help of institutions which will organize um, community life. And uh, <clears throat> I want to read you from the book by Leszek Kulakowski, a quotation from Marx on this topic, on Stirner's philosophy. Individuals have always and in all circumstances stood on their own feet, but they were not unique, or oh, the German word einzig, in the sense of not needing one another. Their needs sex, trade, and the division of labor are such as to make them mutually dependent, and so they have been obliged to enter into relationships. This they did not as pure egos, but as individuals, at a particular stage of development of their productive forces and needs, which were in turn determined by their mutual intercourse. In this way, their personal individual behavior towards one another has created their existing relationships and renews them day by day. The history of an individual cannot be detached from that of his predecessors or contemporaries, but is determined by them. And then he says that the intentions of individuals are of little account in determining the effect and social significance of their behavior in a situation in which it is not individuals that regulate social ties, but the ties they have created, 
uh, become an independent alien force regulating the lives of individuals. I hope to be able in the future to uh, have a conversation with any of you if you have any opinions on the matter. Uh, and uh, let's make a dialogue on it. Bye.